In today's video, you are going to learn instancing, which is a very important topic to know regarding the performance and optimization of 3D applications. So, what is instancing or instanced rendering? Instancing is a technique where we draw many objects at once with a single render call, saving us all the CPU GPU communications each time we need to render an object. This may be the clearest and most concise definition of instancing. Well, unless you don't know what a render call is. You know, when you want to create and display a mesh using 3GS, there is actually a lot of complex stuff being handled by the library behind the scenes. So basically, when you create an instance of the geometry in the material composing the mesh and adding it to the scene using a couple lines of code, you are actually telling the CPU to send some commands and data to the GPU in order for it to render that mesh. This process is called a rendering call and it happens as many times as the number of the objects you want to display in your scene. So if you want to render 4 objects for example, 4 rendering calls are going to take place. Having said that, the more rendering calls your app is going to make, the less performant the app is going to be, and here we are talking about some pretty big numbers of rendering calls, like many thousands or even hundreds of thousands of rendering calls, not just a few dozens. Now, the source of the problem doesn't come from the GPU, because GPUs nowadays are so powerful and capable to do that so easily, but it's rather the communication part between the CPU and the GPU that slows down the whole process. In some cases, you may want to have that many objects in your scene, and the best example of that is a particle system or maybe some grass model that covers a huge terrain in a game. Dealing with that using a classic for loop to create the meshes means thousands of render calls, which again means low performance. Well, thankfully, there is a solution to that, which is instancing or instanced rendering. To understand how this technique is helpful, let's go back to the definition we've seen earlier. Instancing is a technique where we draw many objects at once with a single render call, saving us all the CPU GPU communications each time we need to render an object. Yes, you heard it right, with instancing we can actually render like a million mesh with one single render call, but only if the mesh has the same geometry in the same material. So since we have the same data about the objects we want to render, we can pass that data only once to the GPU and let it render them all at once without having to repeat that communication phase between the CPU and the GPU. Now let's put what we've learned into practice. And as you can see, we have this scene that contains only a couple of light sources. So, the first thing we are going to do is create the geometry in the material of the objects we are going to make. Next, we are going to create an instance of the instanced mesh class instead of mesh, pass the geometry in the material as arguments and add a third one which represents the number of instances we want to add to our scene. Now if we take a look at the result you see that we got 100 instances, but they are just on top of each other that's why it seems like we just have one. So as I said earlier we only have one single geometry in material for all the objects However, we can still apply different geometric transformations to them. Furthermore, to apply those transformations, we can simply pass a value to a certain position or rotation property like we usually do, but we'll have to use a transformation matrix. Having said that, to iterate over all the instances, we are going to use a for loop. The next thing we are going to do is create an object 3D instance and use its matrix to pass the transformation values to every one of our objects. So to position each object randomly in our scene we are going to use a little bit of math. Next we'll have to update the matrix of our object. Then we'll call set matrix add to set the matrix to the object at the index i. And there we go, we got our 100 icosahedron spread all over the scene. Now let's add 1000 object instead. 
and again it's still running smoothly. Let's add another zero and see what will happen. And as you see, even with 10k instance, my 13 years old PC is still running the app smoothly while recording, which is really impressive if you ask me. So let's do some rotation and scale. The scale doesn't look the way I want it to since it's applied differently on each axis so what we are going to do is pass the same random value on the three axes. Another property we are able to change is the color of the instances and that by calling the setColorAt method which takes the index of the object and an instance of the color class. As you see we got different shades of green because we set the color earlier to green Hence, to get random colors, we'll just remove the color property from the material. Now how about applying a rotation animation to the instances? To do that we are going to apply the transformation through a matrix like we did earlier. So since we want to apply rotation only, we want to preserve the other values of the matrix, I mean the positioning in scale values more precisely. So first of all we are going to create a matrix for instance which we are going to fill with the transformation matrix of an object in each iteration by calling get matrix add. Next, we'll call decompose to extract the values of the position, rotation, and scale. Then, we'll use the time to update the rotation values. The next step we are going to do is to add this line which is crucial for the animation to work. We also have the ability to apply a rotation on the entire set of objects and that's by altering the rotation property like we do with any object 3D so no need for a matrix here. We can use instancing to create multiple clones of a loaded model. In this example we'll create 10,000 copies of this star. So first I'll uncomment this block of code related to loading the model in the environment map. Next I'll comment out the code we've typed since we no longer need it. Now to create an instanced mesh we are going to follow almost the same steps we did earlier to make the icosahedron copies. 
The first thing we are going to do is extract the mesh composing the model by calling get object by name. You can get the name by using the editor on the 3GS website. Next, we'll extract the geometry of the mesh and clone it. The next step is the extraction of the material of the mesh. And now that we have the geometry in the material, we are simply going to set them as arguments to the instanced mesh constructor. Finally, I'll scale down the model, and that's it. And this is it for this video, so make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.